Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to see you, everybody. Uh, welcome to Celebrating Act 2 with John Coleman and Art Kurz, bringing you joy and information and, and whatever else you need for whatever <laughs> ails you. How you doing, John? I'm doing a great, Art. Everything you might possibly need for the second half of your life. Hmm. So Really? <laughs> but when can we expect it? Because I understand they're not delivering like they used to. <laughs> well... They're not delivering to the first half of my life anymore. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> it, 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 have you been watching the news? All these boats, we're both on the West Coast, so uh, it's kind of local news. I don't know if it's a big national story, but all the um, the ships that are uh, d deliver goods from uh, the rest of the world into Long Beach and L.A. Harbor um, are all sitting out in the ocean waiting to be unloaded because I guess there's a strike or something what's it the supply chain that we have a problem with john these days? john john are you pulling my chain <laughs> yours i'm pulling i'm yanking your supply chain art actually i think all of our chains are being yanked a bit here uh oh, yeah. yeah no there's a i mean uh, there's a the combination of events of uh the pandemic and 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 uh, a lot of plants in asia that supplied a lot of our materials shut down, right. and then they were shut. Yeah, anything worthwhile is now made in Japan, isn't that right? Or China? Pardon China, me, China. China. Well, yeah. Whether it's worthwhile or not, it's not made here. <laughs> it's made. So, <laughs> Do you so, remember? By the way, just as a, as an aside, since we haven't really thought out our little program here this morning. Yeah. Do you remember as a kid, um, after World War II, because we were both bo we we're both baby boomers. When you went to um, a, a, a toy store, they'd always have the cheap little toys, little metal toys from Japan. And anything right. was from Japan was cheap, and it wasn't worth the money, and it would break easily. Boy, what a change, huh? You know, actually, it only, it only took actually, 75 years. I actually uh, have some specific information about that. The reason why they were is that they built exactly what they were asked to build. If you asked to build a lot of stuff cheap, made yeah. cheaply, they would do it. As soon as somebody said to them, hey, you know what, could you make them actually with a high quality? They said, sure, whatever you want, just specify what you want. And then uh, from having a, a crappy little things that came from Japan, all of a sudden, they that's where you got the Walkman from, you know, all the Sony products, where you started getting automobiles that weren't just thrown together, but were high quality, and then overcame uh, uh, the quality that we were providing here in the U.S. and just about wiped out, for instance, the auto industry. You, because can, tell, of the, you, can, you can tell I'm going to take exception to that. Well, but that's, that's, what, that's what happened. Uh, be, and I know well, that because I actually worked for a company called Seiko for a while, uh, uh -huh. selling a... a, a uh, dye supplements and printers and things like that in the computer graphics industry. And I actually spent a, a good deal of time in Japan and got to know some of the issues, and not all of the issues, but they could build whatever you want, of any quality you want, as quickly as you wanted, but you specified what you wanted, and that was part of the problem. Go ahead, now take exception to it, John. All right, I'm not going to argue that that was part of the problem. Oh, but that came later because the original problem was, like Europe, Japan was devastated. They didn't have any industry left. They couldn't make a lot of things. They had to build their manufacturing back up from almost nothing. And so they couldn't make big machines, cars, things like that. They started out with what they could make. They could take bicycles and motorize them, for instance. Mm. They could make small products. That combined with the fact that as they, after the war, were able to build up their manufacturing capability, their domestic market <laughs> had no money. They mm. wanted to sell to who? The great white giant across the, the Pacific Ocean. So what did they do? They, like any smart business people, to break into a market, you got in with a lower price product. Now, you put all of the stuff that you're saying together with all the stuff I'm saying together, and that was what happened in the first 
what, 10 years after World War II? 10 or 20 yeah. years almost. Think about the automobiles. Um, today, Nissan is a powerhouse, world yeah. powerhouse. But uh, a, a Nissan and Honda. And but Toyota. Think about right. after World War II, they, they barely existed. And, okay, uh, so now, now that we have now that we have shared our our failing uh, uh, with completeness knowledge of what happened after World War II in Japan, let's talk about yeah. the supply chain because we know that's actually a real problem that everybody throughout America who can't get toilet paper, who can't get it's, Christmas gifts, who can't get it's our else. problem today, not Japan's problem. Uh, right, and so uh, it seems to me that really what's happened here is. Uh, because of the early pandemic and so much stuff did come from Asia and China, particularly, but also Vietnam and other places, that they all shut down and uh, for some period of time. So that created shortages. And now that they're back up to full blast, the uh, other things that happen, unemployment here, particularly truckers and, and uh, things like that. Uh, so th we've lost a lot of people who could, were part of that supply chain. And now that they're... Uh, manufacturing like gangbusters in Asia and shipping it over by ships. The ships used to come in, they used to unload them, put them on the back of a truck and send them someplace for distribution either to uh, uh, the railroads or what, but you need a trucker. So now what's happening is all the ships are backing up in, off of Long Beach and it's also happening uh, on the other side in the, in the, Atlant the Atlantic uh, Ocean as well, but much more so here where I think about 40 or 50 percent of all imported goods uh, come on the West Coast, particularly LA, Long Beach. So they're all backed up. They can't unload them fast enough. And when they unload them, they don't have truckers to move them off the uh, shipyard to distribution points. Uh, so it's a mess right now. But you know what? It's be some disruption. Uh, quite frankly, trucking uh, truckers uh, Starting uh, truckers, long haul truckers are making 80000 a year. And so it will attract a lot of uh, perhaps younger people who don't consider that to be a bad salary, even though the hours and the conditions and being on the road all the time, you know, for a lot of young people who are single, that may work out kind of well. A lot of women are becoming truckers now, which didn't used to be the case. And uh, after about 10 weeks of training, they're earning a pretty good salary for somebody with just, let's say, a college education. Uh, I mean, a high school education. So I think all this stuff will begin to, it may not help us during Christmas, but in the meantime, if you want a Christmas gift, we're sitting in October now, I think you better order it <laughs> and get it and put it in the closet. Well, um, you know, the Christmas market is such a big deal in the retail industry. Mm. Um, and retail is only the end result of manufacturing, if you right. think of it that way, right? Um, that I, I heard, I don't know if I got this right, but I heard something that, like something similar to this uh, statistic, and that is that uh, most retail companies are in the red nine months of the year, and it oh, takes sure. them the, the last three months of the year, holidays, from Thanksgiving to Christmas to New Year's to basically get into the black for the year. Right. So that's why everybody's concerned about, you know, the Christmas market, uh, as they call it, the holiday market. Uh, and if you don't have the goods to sell, you certainly can't sell anything and get yourself out of the red. So it, it doesn't look good uh, right now because of this supply chain problem. But I think, as you point out, it's not just a supply chain problem. It's part of a bigger problem, including pandemic results from the pandemic and other things, but also political stuff. Um, I was told that the um, the Long Beach Harbor, L.A. Long Beach Harbor, is on the the uh, longshoremen, I think, are on strike. Well, mm. you know, this isn't a great time to have a strike. At least not for the rest of us. <laughs> maybe maybe great for them, but it certainly doesn't help us and uh, what I'll call the Christmas market. So. There's a lot of, like everything else in our life today, there's a lot of factors involved. And um, I don't know what you and I and the average person can do about it, particularly uh, if you're in the retired age. But I guess we can always uh, go out on the porch and scream. 
Right. I think that one thing that will happen is because supplies are uh, restricted, uh, that we can expect price increases across the board. Uh, I will tell you that one of the companies that, that is fastidious about keeping prices low, Costco, uh, they have a, a, a flat of uh, uh, water, like uh, 34 bottles or something. It's been two ninety nine forever. And I just picked up a couple of flats of water the other day, and it was three twenty nine. And they don't just raise it. Their their whole trick is uh, to serve their uh, clientele, and they they're a very successful chain making good profits mainly on the uh, the fees that they charge people to become members. So that for that fee, they keep prices low, which makes them a great bargain for the fee that you paid uh, for your annual membership. But they've right. gone up about 20 cents per flat for the first time, probably in the last four or five years. And I think yeah. we could see more of that. Meats are more expensive. I, uh, in the supermarket I saw the other day. Uh, if you, fruits and vegetables, if you are, which are shipped just, in. Right. Not just Costco, but all right. the discount, big Correct. discount warehouses, uh, Walmart, Target. You go to any of those, if you're a regular shopper, you have seen the prices rise. And of course, my big bugaboo is with the government. Um, which has, I don't know how many years ago, five years ago, eight years ago, decided that they're not going to measure inflation with the, the things that I think are the most important, the biggest indicators of inflation, um, which is gas and heating oil, things like that. It's the stuff that goes up. Mm. Oh, oh, that's not part of core inflation. Oh, that's not the core economy. We're just going to measure. Well, now everything's going up. We've right. got inflation left, right, and sideways, and they're still trying to tell us, well, it's transitory. It's just, it'll all go away. Well, so, yeah. it'll all go away when gas permanently ends up at 450 a gallon here in California. Or we all have electric vehicles and uh, solar panels on a roof and don't pay for fuel anymore. But uh, speaking speaking of December... Um, yes. Would you oh, that's, out, what we, that's what we were talking about. Well, will you put on your calendar in December, we should talk about the fact that Social Security is going to get a big boost uh, in December, starting in January, like uh, an average of $90 per month uh, for it's... a couple. Hey, you know, it'll help pay for that gasoline because you like gas guzzlers. Yeah, but here's here's the fallacy of looking at that. Oh, fallacy. The fallacy of the beard. When do the you really have a beard? The fallacy of looking at the increase from Social Security is real simple. It's a cola. It's a cost of living increase. They you wouldn't be cola. paying a dime extra if the cost of living didn't go up, if we didn't have inflation. And you know what, Art? You may look at that $10, $30, whatever it is, as, as a gift. I look at it as a, a symptom of a bad economy. We're, we've got inflation. They're pay, they got more money. They have to pay more money. It's not, you know what? I'd rather have low prices and no inflation don't give me a cost of living i don't need what it I, what, what i'd like to say up. is that perhaps to end this conversation today because we're now we're getting a little political is <laughs> i like ginger ale you like root beer but everybody should enjoy cola from time to time with that art art i bow to your wisdom we should end uh, that i think we've, we let's we should stop while we're behind stop. We've solved the supply chain problem. Oh, we yeah. have. We've solved the inflation problem. Buying the Christmas we, gifts problem. And we went into Social Security. I don't know what else is left for us to do. I think the world owes us a big thank you. Well, I think what else, yes, what else is left to do is to say, see you and thanks for joining us and see you next week. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.